Uh, hello, my name is Benjamin Sajan. This is for my Project 3 video submission. Um, and I'm just going to be going through my Project 3 uh, outline. Um, but before I even began the outline, I wanted to know what the research question was asking, which is how we change our language and code based on these different situations we find ourselves in. And I think that's really putting a lot of responsibility on the speaker than rather than the audience that you're ch modifying your language for. Um, so right off the bat, I know that in my intro paragraph, I want to define what code switching and code meshing means. Um, but I also want to include like a hook for the reader to grab onto. Um, so I explain how, you know, we meet different people throughout our lives uh, with these different expectations and how we're supposed to connect with them. And I also want to, you know, touch upon like the different mediums we connect into because for my thesis statement, I'm going to be using uh, three main reasons for three body paragraphs. Um, each one a formal example of my code usage. So the first example um, would be my uh, place of work. I'm using work memos. Um, and then the second example is going to be social media, like Instagram or like a discussion board. And the third example is going to be uh, group messaging, which I used to connect with people that I talk to in real life. Um, so for the first uh, paragraph, body paragraph, the work memos, I want to make, sh uh, make sure I emphasize that professional code is uh, required. Um, and I also want to mention that, you know, like there's like these overlappings of expectations of code, um, you know, professionalism as a, as a, as a rule across different um, workspaces. Um, because I will touch about that sooner, later in the um, third body paragraph. Um, I want to mention how my, who my audience is, um, what my intentions are, and my move. Um, and then same thing for social media. Um, I'll explain how it's different than a, a work memo, that um, it's an internet space, so there's like less physical interaction, so the code is bound to be different. Um, so the audience are like friends, you know, people you, um, who have common interests, um, possible strangers. Um, and then I also want to mention that uh, because I feel like there's like a lack of intention for social media, it's really based on the user's discretion. Um, and yeah, I also want to highlight what my move is. And then for my third body paragraph, I will be explaining uh, group messaging, how it's a similar internet space with less formality, um, but there's also like limitations where you have to be mindful in a group setting, you can't, you know, be excessive. There's, I feel like there's a healthy balance of rules when it comes to code in a group messaging environment compared to, you know, social media. I want to emphasize that there's an audience for group messaging. These are people you interact with, uh, you know, in real life, but you're just using this as a platform of interaction. I'll present my formal example, which is a group chat I use to communicate with my friends. And then uh, I will also like explain what's there to gain. Um, this is a group chat I use for a musical project. So there's times of formality and there's also times of playfulness. I mean, I'll explain the code meshing that goes on with the mixture of the two. Um, and for my conclusion, I'll, um, I'll just restate my thesis. I'll show that I analyze code usage with these three ideas by highlighting key differences and similarity, similarities. And um, I want to end it off with a note about code switching and code meshing and how code switching or code meshing actually becomes increasingly more popular because in the evolving world, we're combining all these methods of, of communication and language that it be it, like code switching becomes more unintentional and it becomes more natural uh, for the speaker. Thank you.